Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been quite a while since we've done an Ashtanga class, so I had a little extra time. I recorded the practice and now I'm doing the voiceover. So Samastiti, hands together at the heart. And we're just gonna get started here. I didn't chant the opening mantra, I'm just saying it within my own mind. And up first we have our Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutations. Inhale, reach your arms up, squeeze your palms together, and exhale, forward fold, tucking in your chin. Inhale, lengthen, halfway up, and exhale, make your way back to your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, lift the chin, and exhale, downward facing dog, tuck the chin in towards your chest. One. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, tippy toes. Exhale, bend your knees. Walk your feet towards your hands, big toes together, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold, tuck in the chin, head down. Inhale, reach all the way up, palms together, look at the sky, and Samastiti. Inhale, palms together. Exhale, forward dive down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Push your chest back towards your knees. One, try to get your heels down. Two, straighten the elbows. Three, brace the belly. Four, and five. When you're ready, inhale, tippy toes. <laughs> I'm early. Exhale, bend your knees. Inhale, walk your feet to your hands and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Big breath in, push into the feet, stand all the way up, look at your thumbs. And exhale, Samastiti. Two more to go. Ekam, inhale. Dwe, exhale. Trini, inhale. Chitwari, exhale. Pancha, inhale. And shot, exhale. Always try to regulate your breathing in downward facing dog. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Sapta. Inhale, come on front. Ashto, exhale, drop your head. Nava, inhale, rise and shine. Samasiti. Last one. Egam. Dwe. Trini. Chatwari, Pancha, Shat, One, Two, Three.
four and five Sapta, bring it front, Ashto, forward fold, Nava, stand up, Samasiti. Moving on to Surya Namaskar B, bend your knees, inhale, find your Utkatasana, chair pose, and then exhale, belly to thighs, forward fold, inhale, look front, and exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Upward Facing Dog. And big exhale to Down Dog. You're going to step your right foot front for Warrior One. As you breathe in, sweep your arms up. And as you breathe out, step the right foot back for your tricep push-up, Chaturanga. Inhale, Upward Facing and exhale downward facing repeating on the left side so left foot steps through you're still breathing out and then inhale sweep your arms up and then exhale finding that chaturanga once again elbows in chest forward inhale upward dog and exhale downward dog now i know when i first started to do the practice by this point even just as we're warming up I would feel almost out of breath in Surya Namaskar B. Remember in Downward Dog, try to gain control of your breathing. Deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Now inhale, walk or hop your feet back towards your hands, lengthen, and exhale, drop your head to your feet. Crouch down low for Utkatasana, hips to heels, and then lift the chest off the thighs, chair pose, Samastiti. Two more, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, straighten the legs. Inhale, take your gaze front, and exhale, Vinyasa. You can do the push-up on your knees or on your toes. Inhale, upward dog. Big transition, down dog, right foot steps through, big exhale, and then inhale, stand tall, shoulders above hips. Exhale, find your push up. And maybe some days you want to skip the push up. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog, left side, turning out right toes, stepping left foot. Breathe in, reach up. Breathe out, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, downward dog, and breathe. And those of you that get a little tired quickly in your wrist or in your arms, during the tricep push-up, a great modification is to drop to your knees, like tabletop, not even a knee push-up, and do cat and cow instead of up dog and your push-up. Okay, enough of that. Walk, step, hop, feet to the hands. Inhale, halfway up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Squat down, reach up, squeeze your palms together, feet together, knees together, and Samasthiti. Last time, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, dive down. Look front, breathe in. Take it back, exhale. So the push-up could just be tabletop and then inhale like cow face, arching, and then exhale cat into your downward dog. That's an option. Step the right hook, foot to front, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, chaturanga tricep push-up or table, whatever you're doing. Inhale, up dog or cow face. Exhale, down dog. Left foot steps front, breathe in. Chaturanga, breathe out. Pull your chest front, upward dog, breathe in, straighten the arms. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking the moment to pause, gain control of breathing. One, two, three, four, five, inhale, walk or hop, 
Exhale, take your deep forward fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. And exhale, Samastiti. So the warm up's complete. Now you step or hop your feet hip width apart. Grab your big toes, bending or straightening the legs. Inhale, look front. And then exhale, forward fold between your calves or your lower legs. One. Two. Three, four, four and a half, <laughs> and five. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, step on your feet. Inhale, look front. Exhale, down. I think I just said step on your feet but what I really meant is step on your palms. So the back of your hands are down. Two, <laughs> three, four, five, there it is. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, hands on your waist. Inhale, stand up. Samasiti. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Right foot steps back. Grab your right big toe. Look up to your left hand. One. Two. Three. Four. And five, inhale, stand up. Switch your feet as you exhale. Grab your left big toe. And then inhale, look up to the right thumb. One. Two. Three. Four. And five, revolve the triangle. Inhale, stand up, face the back of your mat. Exhale, left hand down, right hand up. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, stand on up and switch your feet. Right hand goes down as you twist to the left. Look up at the left thumb. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, make a T. And then as you exhale, samastiti, walk or hop. Side angle pose, right foot steps longer back and bend the right knee, exhale, right hand down, left arm up. You're trying to make a straight line from the left ankle all the way up to the left wrist. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, push into the right leg. Exhale, bend the left knee, left hand down, right arm up. One, two, three, four, and five. Next up, we have revolved side angle. So you'll return to the back side, dropping that left knee down this time and twisting to the right. So I go for the full pose here, but you can twist, hooking left elbow, left shoulder outside your right knee, hands together at the heart, or you can work arms apart, or like I'm demonstrating, the full posture is 
the same angle. So this time it's the right arm all the way down to that left heel. Two, three, <laughs> four, and five. Switching sides, I probably talk too much. Right knee down, and then inhale, sweep your right arm up. I take this extra breath here. Exhale, hug the left knee in and twist. Right hand on the ground, left arm up. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, make a T. And then exhale, Samasthiti feet together. Next up, you're supposed to step your right foot back, but I'm stepping my left so I can face you. Hands on the waist, inhale, look up. And exhale, hands on the ground. Inhale, push the floor away, look up. Exhale, top of your head on the ground or towards the ground. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, grab your waist. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, make a T. B, hands start on the waist just like before. This time, inhale, look up. No hands. Exhale, just the head down. And with the hands on the waist, think about squeezing the elbows together behind your back. One. This will help get the shoulders ready for the next one. Two. Relax your face. Three. four, and five. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, make a T. Next one, C. Hands interlock behind you. Inhale, stretch the elbows. And then exhale with the elbows straight. Lift the arms off your back. One, let the shoulders be heavy. Two, you can wiggle around. Three, reaching for the floor behind you. Four, And five, push into the feet, inhale, stand up. Exhale, stretch to the T. Last one is D, hands on the waist, breathe in, look up. Breathe out, grab those big toes again. You can bend your knees first. Inhale, straighten the arms and legs, and then exhale, folding down. One. Two. Three. four, and five. Inhale, halfway up, grab your waist. Inhale again, stand up, Samasthiti. Pyramid pose, step your right foot back, reverse prayer your hands or grabbing opposite elbows, face the back of your mat. Inhale, look up, and then exhale, fold to front. So you want your hips and shoulders square to the back edge of your mat. Left toes turn out slightly, right toes straight front. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, stand up. And then exhale when you're ready, folding over that left leg, chest towards the knee. One, two, three, four, five, inhale, stand all the way up, exhale, Samasthiti, next is a standing balance, left hand on your waist, bend your right knee, inhale, straighten it, and exhale, fold, one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, stand up. B, open the leg to the right and look to the left. One, two, my hair's looking crazy already. Three, four, five, come back to center. Inhale, exhale, little fold. I kind of failed. Grab your waist, keep your leg up. One, 
two, three, four, and five. Switching sides. Left leg up, breathe in, stand tall, and then breathe out, fold towards the leg. One, two, three, four, five. B, swing it to the left and look to the right. One, keep pushing through the right foot. Two, chest up. Three, four, and five. Coming back towards the middle for A. Little extra fold as you breathe out. Then find your balance, shoulders above hips, hands on the waist. One, two, this is where your leg feels so heavy. Three, four, and five, Samastiti. Inhale, palms together. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look front. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. And then walk or jump your feet straight away for Utkatasana, chair pose, feet by the hands. Technically, I think it's called Fierce Pose. You hold this for five breaths. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Vinyasa to Downward Dog. You can see I take a little crow pose for a second. And then jump it back, step it back. And now from downward facing dog, you'll step your right foot between your hands for warrior one. Bend the knee, reach up, look up. One, if you start to feel this in your neck too much, look forward. Two, three, four, and five. So inhale, straighten the right leg, face the back, bend the left leg, warrior one. One, two, three, four, five. Warrior two, still facing the back. One, two, three, four. Five, warrior two, facing the front, switch your feet and your gaze. One, two, three, four, and five vinyasa to downward dog. Oh, I did some failed attempts of a little handstand balance. I was too afraid of hitting that shelf <laughs> right behind me. That's okay. And from downward facing dog, we're going into the seated postures, starting with Dandasana, seated staff pose. Flex your feet, push the heels down, push the hands down next to your hips, and then draw the chin in and down. One, two, sucking the lower belly in, three, four, Five, Pachimottanasana, grabbing big toes, inhale, look front, and exhale, forward fold. If you feel this in your lower back, please bend your knees and open your feet apart slightly to make it a little easier. So this is version A, grabbing the big toes. And now we'll go just a little bit deeper into the same posture. Inhale, look front. And if you can, grab the outside of your feet, or like I'm doing, wrapping the arms around the feet. And exhale, fold. So really lengthening the upper body towards the feet.
Inhale, look front. Exhale, release your arms. Eastern plank, your hands slide behind your hips, fingers forward. Inhale, lift your hips up. Straight legs is the full posture. You can also do this with bent legs. One, two, three, four, and five. Bring your hips down. Take your vinyasa to downward facing dog. So going through that push up each time, or if you want, you can stay seated and just wait for the next pose because we're always going to be coming back down to seated. Once you're down, the left leg will be straight out in front of you and the right foot moves to half lotus. So you lift the foot and bring it to the left hip crease. Your right arm swings behind your back and grabs the big toe and your left arm reaches for that left foot as you fold front. Now, if half lotus is not in your practice, you could do the same pose with the right foot on the floor by your inner thigh instead of on top of the leg and still reaching right hand behind your back even though there's no foot there. You'll still get some good hip flexibility and start to introduce the shoulders with the, the wraparound of the right arm. So breathing here, and if the heel is up, you should feel the heel pushing <laughs> gently into the low belly. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Right foot long, cradle, left heel half lotus into the right hip, left hand behind, right arm forward, and exhale, fold front, pushing the heel up and in to your belly. Supposedly, it's supposed to be giving you a massage on your insides, which I do feel. Not sure exactly what that does, but maybe gets things moving and grooving in there. And then inhale, look front. Exhale, release. We'll stay down, straighten your left leg. Now your right foot will tuck back, so it's like a quad stretch. Inhale, you can sit here, or if you feel okay, you can exhale and fold front. So your knees are close together, the right toes are pointing back, the sole of your foot's facing up, and the ankle is nice and stretched out. I know many of us aren't used to sitting like this, so you might wanna prop yourself up on a pillow here. And when I first started, I was not able to fold all the way forward because I just, I wasn't used to it and my knees were tight, my hips were tight. And let's try the other side. Swing the right leg front, and then close the left knee joint as you pull the heel back, top of the foot down, sole of the foot up, hips are level, and then exhale, tipping from the hips forward. It's a really odd sequence of events here in your joints, but it's really good for your knees and hips if you can practice sitting like this. And then when you're ready, inhale, look up, exhale, come out of it. Take your vinyasa to downward facing dog. And if you do wanna work on those push-ups and you've been doing the knees down for a while, then another option is to go all the way down on your belly for a little extra support before the upper dog. Next, you'll sit down for a Janu Shasana A. Bend the right knee out to 90 degrees and then grab your left foot and fold front. The heel should be all the way into your pubic bone. You can't really see it because it's my right foot right now, but you'll notice on the other side, it's all the way tucked in. Inhale, look up. Exhale, let's switch the legs, straighten your right leg, and then notice left heel all the way in and as you fold, think about bringing the center of your chest over the knee that's in front of you. So in this case, the right leg is in front. So my chest is moving not only forward, but slightly to the right. And that's gonna give you a deeper stretch through the left hip and left waist. I wanted to do a voiceover so it's easier to hear me and now I'm not even counting. <laughs> Inhale, look up, exhale, release. Vinyasa to downward facing dog. I'm just trying to give you some cues that I tell myself as I practice and things I've heard from my teacher and hopefully it helps you. Next, we have Marichasana A, Pose of the Sage. 
lets it down, left leg goes straight out, and this time the right knee bends in towards the chest. Now your right foot is not next to the left quad, it's out to the side. So as you fold front, there's room for your shoulder to go down the shin and you can try the bind. The right arm goes around the leg and the left arm is just behind your back, which we prepped in the earlier pose that we did seated, the half lotus. And you're folding over the left leg over time you'll be able to get the head down but initially maybe you're just sitting up working the shoulders and the hip and that's okay three four five inhale sit up exhale switch your legs so left foot comes out just a little bit sit up nice and tall and then as you exhale fold inside that left leg yeah, squeeze it into your body. Bend the left arm, bend the right arm. Inhale, look front. And then exhale, take your fold. Head down, chest down. So the key here is to really use that left arm hugging that bent left leg. Squeeze it into your body so you can have as much slack on your arms as possible. I have short arms, so I really got to work on the shoulders here. Three four and five inhale sit up exhale release the arms release the legs take your vinyasa to downward dog skipping marichasana b we move to marichasana c left leg straight bend the right knee in towards the chest Another bind here, but in a twist form. So inhale, sit up tall, and then exhale, turn to the right. You can stay like this, or you can try to hook the left shoulder outside the right knee, and then you'll bend that left arm and sneak it around the shin towards the opposite hip, and then the right hand goes behind your back. One, two, three, four, and five, switching sides. So left leg bends, inhale, sit up tall. I always kind of exhale, lean back a little bit to get room, and then hook the right shoulder outside the left knee, or if you can think about your right side of your rib cage, touching that thigh that will help you twist from lower, not just the top. One, two, three, four, and five. Releasing, taking vinyasa to downward facing dog. I've been doing my practice later in the day and it helps in some aspects, but then other poses are more difficult, like that one. <laughs> Navasana boat pose. Sit down with your legs up in front of you, bent or straight, and balance on the back side of your sitting bones. So when you practice later in the day, it's easier, I think, for your flexibility because you've been moving around during the day, so your body's more warm. Um, we're holding Navasana, by the way. Lolasana, cross your ankles, lift up, push, push, push. And then number two, Navasana, legs up, breathe while I tell the story. Um, so what was I saying? Yes, later in the day, a lot of postures can be easier, but things like twist, you've had more fuel. Okay, Lolasana, lift up, yay, yay, yay. Navasana, boat pose, breathe. Um, so when you've had more food and fuel, like your breakfast and your lunch, you know, your torso might feel a little bit larger, so it's harder to twist. Lolasana, lift up. Navasana, but in the morning time is a great practice to do, you know, deep twists and things like that because your body's more empty and it's just easier to do. Lolasana, lift up. Oh, that was not good. Navasana, breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Vinyasa to downward facing dog. See, wasn't that painless? I told you a story during it. Who knows if anyone actually did the Lolasana with me, but if you did, congratulations. 
Baddha Konasana Butterfly. Sit down, soles of the feet together, knees apart, and you'll see here my hands are behind my hips, and I'll lift my hips, boop, and then place them towards my heels. I recommend you do that if you can. So the first one is a flat back. At exhale, fold, flat back down as best you can, and think about reaching your head towards the ground, and when that happens, the next step is to reach your chin. Makes it a little bit tougher. Rolling the inner thighs down and back, squeezing your feet together. Lower body will stay the same for B, inhale, sit up. Exhale, round your body this time like an angry cat and bring your head towards your feet. I just realized recently that I can get a really good stretch between my shoulder blades here. So push your shoulder blades apart, push the knees down, really stretch the back of your body. Inhale, sit up, and then exhale, wide-legged fold, reaching for the outer leg. Don't worry about reaching the foot if you're not there yet. Grab the calf muscle, you know, quad, wherever you're at, and just bring the chest forward. And when you're ready, you're going to sit on the back of your sitting bones, like boat pose, and lift your feet up to meet your hands. Lift them up so light as a feather. Now look up, feet apart. One. Two, it's a wobbly world. <laughs> Three. Four. And five, don't let go of your feet, rock back. Touch the feet to the ground behind you, tushies up. One, two, feet apart. Three, four, and five. You're going to sit up and then fall forward without letting go. Try it. <laughs> Ready? Sit up and boom, fall forward. Skipping the vinyasa, let's lie straight down. Bending the right knee, grabbing the big toe and straightening the leg up. Exhale, lift your head, crunch your body up. Now it's very important here that the left hand is pushing down actively on the left thigh. Shoulders off the ground, straighten your knee if possible. And then moving to version B, the head and shoulders will come down on the ground and you'll swing the leg over to the right side. So head, shoulders down, Try to reach the right pinkies to the floor as you look to the left. Same exact posture we did standing, but instead of the left hand on your waist, the left hand is helping ground the left leg and hip. Come back to center, breathe in. Exhale, go ahead and lift your head one last time. Try to touch your leg and switching sides. So the right foot is long or right leg. Bend the left leg, grab your big toe, reach it up. And then exhale, lift and crunch. One, two, three, four, and five. B, head and shoulders down on the floor, and you'll reach the left foot over to the left side. Try to keep the right hip grounded. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, bring the leg back to center. Exhale, lift your head up. And release your foot, release your leg all the way down. Reach your hands behind your head and grab your big toes as you lift your hips. Don't let go of your toes. Inhale, rock up like Navasana. Gaze up, legs straight or bent, chest up, shoulders back. Breathe, balance on your sits bones. And then we're going to rock back again, this time catching your heels. And as you rock up, bend your knees, pull the knees up into the chest. Don't touch the ground, rock up, and then see if you can slowly straighten the legs and fold yourself like you're in a packing cube. You're a vacuum seal version of yourself. Wrapping the arms around the calves as you place your chin between your shin. Inhale. 
Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Good job, everyone. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. So that was the primary series seated sequence. And now we have our closing sequence. So everyone does this at the end, no matter what level they're at. Bend your knees for your three back bends. I'm going to demonstrate wheel. If you want to do bridge pose, you would just lift your hips like you're doing a bridge, like that, but no arms. So choose one, and we have five breaths here. One, bridge or wheel. Two, three, four, and five, tap your hips down, tap your head down. Number two, come right back up, bridge or wheel, one. If you're in wheel, look between your hands. Two, think about pushing your chest to the back of your mat. Three, four, and five. Number three, come back up, bridge or wheel, one, two, Three, four, and five. Everyone, slowly come down. As you feel ready, take your counter stretch, which is just an easy fold. You're not pulling, you're not grabbing, you're just dangling over your legs. Now comes my favorite part. I love the shoulder stand through the plow sequence. So you can have your legs above your hips here if you're not comfortable in shoulder stand. But if you are, let's go ahead, pop the hips up, support your lower back and straighten the legs. And just deep breathing here. From shoulder stand, halasana plow, toes on the floor behind your head, interlock your hands, push the triceps and pinkies down. If you're on your back with legs up against the wall or just legs up, go ahead and bend your knees into your chest and just pause here. Bend your knees for ear pressure pose. Try to drop the knees to the ground next to your ears and actively squeeze in, like try to crush your ears together. And it, again, if you're on your back, you can stay with the knees into the chest. Or if you feel that a happy baby would feel nice right now, you could do a happy baby with the knees apart, but still bent, grabbing the knees, calves, or ankles. Just another breath here, and then we'll make our way down for fish pose. So we did a lot of this forward bending and flexion. And to counter stretch, we have fish, which is a back bend. Your feet will slowly come down in front of you, and then you'll prop yourself up onto your elbows, squeezing the shoulders and elbows in. Inhale, lift your chest, and then exhale, dropping the head back. Really good for the head and the neck. Breathing pushing down into the arms. You're more than welcome to stay in this version of fish forever. You don't need to change at all. Um, but there is another version that we have after this one. So a couple more breaths here. And then you'll begin to lift the arms and the legs. So you'll notice my hips are down and my head is down. And the things in between lifted. Again, it's a back bend, heart opener. Squeeze your feet together, squeeze your hands together, 
and pray that it ends soon, still breathing, smiling on the inside. It's almost done, I promise. Just a couple more and we are done. Slowly come down, make your way to downward facing dog. Careful when you come up from being upside down for so long. And from downward facing dog, we have our headstand or inversion really. Um, so if headstand is not in your practice, you can just stay in down dog for this time. You can come down into dolphin, which is essentially downward facing dog, but on your elbows. You could just rest in child's pose or, you know, it's completely up to you. Tripod headstand. I'm just doing the normal full headstand here holding anywhere from 10 to 20 breaths. I did 10 in this practice. And the goal is just to get the, the head below your heart. So wherever you are, relax the muscles of your face. This is good for your face. Let gravity help you bring some blood into the face. because we all know gravity's constantly pulling us down. <laughs> so we have to go upside down. If you are in headstand with me, you are welcome to do version B, which is like a pike halfway down. It's quite difficult, and especially if you have long legs. I don't, so I feel like I'm very blessed that I can even do this. Um, but if you have long legs, just go slowly. If you're in the pike, take one breath to come back up to the straight headstand. And no matter where you are, let's all move towards child's pose, balasana. Big toes together, knees apart, arms stretched out in front of you. Taking this pause as we transition back upright from being inverted. Vinyasa to downward facing dog. And we're down to the last three official poses of the practice. And they're all done seated in lotus. So from your downward facing dog, come back to your seat. If lotus is not in your practice, no worries. You can do half lotus. You can do crisscross applesauce seated on your pillow. Now, if you want to work the shoulders, the left hand goes behind the back first and then the right, trying to grab your big toes. Inhale, look up and exhale, fold. I know for many of us, that's not in our practice right now. We're working towards. So grabbing opposite elbows behind your back and just working the shoulders again in that way will help you when the hips become more open and there's space there to really reach around. Normally, it's 10 breaths in each of these last poses. So as the practice winds down, the count gets longer, starting around the shoulder stand sequence. We start to lengthen the amount of time in the poses, getting ready for that shavasana, that time of rest, and your meditation or pranayama, should you be doing that after practice. When you're ready, inhale, sit up, index finger and thumb together, tucking your chin. Now you have three different locks in your body. You have your mula bandha, down low, like your PP muscles, if you had to use your bathroom, Uddiyana Bandha, around the navel, so hooking that up and in like you're a fish on a hook, and then Jahala around your throat. So you'll always notice my chin goes down and it pulls back, so the back of my neck is long, and it's almost like I'm trying to make a double chin through the front. So doing all those at the same time in this pose is key. And some days it's just you sitting there <laughs> breathing and that's okay too. And the last pose is a lift up, hands down, hips up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9 and 10. Vinyasa all the way to Samastiti. And that means from down dog, walk or hop your feet to your hands, just like we did in the beginning. Lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, stand all the way up. Samastiti. Pausing here in my mind, repeating closing mantra. And if you're new to my channel, you can click on one of my older Ashtanga videos. Normally I play opening and closing mantra and we chant together. Or if you're not into the chanting, you can still listen and start to bring the, the right tone into the room. Now it's practice time. Okay, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. And your final vinyasa, the best one, the last one. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, and everyone's favorite, the reason why we do it, <laughs> Shavasana, corpse pose. If you feel more comfortable in a different version of a resting place, go ahead and take that. Maybe it's butterfly on your back with the feet together, knees apart, or if you like bent knees with the soles of the feet down, all good. Just find what works for you and find a place where you can feel most at peace. I'm going to go quiet now for a few moments while you breathe, rest, and recover.
slowly start to wiggle your fingers and toes and rock your head from right to left. Draw your knees in towards your chest and pausing here for a second until you roll over to your side. And from your side, you'll push up to a seated place, hands together at your heart. And taking this last second, this last moment to just be quiet, to be with yourself. If you have an intention for your practice, this is where you can remind yourself of that intention. And then always ending with a bow forward of gratitude grateful for the practice, for the sequence, for the teachings and the teachers, and for your body and your spirit. I know we're living through tough times, so I'm grateful for all of you. I'm happy that you decided to join me, whether it was for the full class or a portion. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.